thank you for joining us on NTA Abekuta Channel 12 News. My name is Ayala Balogun. First, the highlights. Senate receives presidential loan implementation request. Federal government takes agriculture innovation to rural dwellers. Leaders at all levels urges to preach togetherness to deepen Nigeria's democracy. Now the news in full. President Muhammad Buhari has written to Senate requesting the approval of the implementation of the new external borrowing of 2.3 trillion naira in the 2021 Appropriation Act. The fund is to part finance the 2021 budget deficit of 5.602 trillion naira. He also sought the approval of the implementation of the donor fund projects under the 2018 to 2020 federal government external borrowing rolling plan. The funds will be channeled towards employing employment generation, poverty alleviation and protection of the most vulnerable persons in Nigeria. Meanwhile, Senate has confirmed the nomination of appointment of 12 persons as members of the National Human Rights Commission with Salamatsu Husseini Suleiman as chairman. The House of Representatives has adopted a resolution to investigate the alleged sporadic shooting by officials of the Nigeria Customs Service in Isain, local government area of Oyo State, which left five people dead. The issue was raised as a matter of urgent public importance by Representative Shino Pella, who explained that the residents of Ojaoba were on Thursday last week while celebrating the Eid festival thrown into mourning mood. This was as a result of the death of five persons following alleged sporadic shooting in the town by some personnel of the Nigeria Customs Service who were in pursuit of a vehicle laden with bags of rice. The House Committee on Customs has been mandated to investigate the incident. The Deputy Speaker Ahmad Idris Wase brought to the notice of members two presidential communications requesting approvals for implementation of external borrowing plans. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has renewed his call for the reparation of all looted Nigerian artifacts taken abroad while commending those countries that have heeded the call by returning such antiquities. In a statement signed by Shegun Adeyemi, Special Assistant to the Minister, to mark the 2021 International Museum Day. The minister also appealed to Nigerians, especially the elite, to join the ongoing campaign to repatriate all looted Nigerian artifacts. Lai Mohammed said the campaign for repatriation of looted artifacts, which was launched, which was launched by the federal government in October 2019, has yielded fruits with the spate of return of stolen Nigerian antiquities from around the world. Listing the efforts being made by the federal government to recover looted artifacts, the minister said, Nigeria has caused a claim to be instituted before the UNESCO mediation body, the Intergovernmental Committee for the Promotion of Return of Cultural Property, ICPRCP, for the return of an if a bronze object to Nigeria, marking the first time ever that Nigeria will institute a claim before this international panel. The Ife bronze head, which was stolen from the National Museum in Jobs in 1987, was acquired by an art gallery owner in Belgium, who is now demanding money from Nigeria before releasing it. Lai Mohammed said in order to forestall further theft of the country's antiquities and other heritage properties, and to enthrone better management in this field, a law has been placed pertaining to the sector before the National Assembly, believing it will be given every support and ensure its expeditious passage. Reflecting on the theme for this year's International Museum Day, which is the future of museums, recover and imagine, the minister said the theme has its background in the changes the world has experienced in the past year because of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. International Museum Day is celebrated on May 18th every year to bring knowledge and information about museum to the people and to introduce museum to the community.
The federal government says inputs of rural dwellers are critical towards the success of its agricultural agenda as a driving force of economic growth. This came up at the flag off of food system dialogue in Kobakbe, Obafemi Wole local government area in Oko State. Lukmon Adifesis report is here presented. The innovative by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Planning through Value Chain Development Program is targeted at improving nutrition, reducing poverty and hunger, as well as encouraging collaborative approach in building sustainable food systems. The, the issue of the rural people is so critical when we talk about food systems because they play an active role. At the end of the day, we want to have what is called a short-term plan of three years and a long-term plan of ten years. So, but having this plan, responses have to come from them. So whatever input we have, we're going to have a communique at the end of this dialogue at the state level. And there's also going to be a kind of articulation of all the results in all the other states where this particular dialogue is holding concurrently and come up with a national report which will form an input into the global summit. Ogun State Commissioner for Agriculture, Adeola Odedino, while commending the initiative, says it will go a long way to empower the rural dwellers as critical stakeholders in food security. This uh, uh, event holding our space will only be useful to United Nations alone. It's going to be useful uh, for Ogun State, especially in formulating future policy on agriculture, as well as it relates to what's supposed to be a gain from agriculture in Ogun State, which is job creation, industrialization, support to smallholder farmers, food and nutrition. At the dialogue, farmers, traders, traditional rulers, among others, highlighted ways to tackle challenges hindering attainment of food security in the country. We are quite appreciative and we are quite grateful. So what we pray for is that the government should be able to make use of the feedback they've gotten here is to increase their commitment. This FCDP, they have tried a lot. If all the programs that they have been doing have been trying like the FCDP too, I think it's not where we are now that we are going to be. The way they are focusing on the youth and women nowadays is very okay because it's the youth that know how to do all this in a modern way. The full system dialogue is scheduled to hold in eight states of the Federation, including the state, to address challenges of agricultural value chain program caused by the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, including climate change globally. Nigeria Labour Congress strike in Kaduna over the sack of workers enters day two, with a commitment by the leadership of the union that its doors remain open for dialogue if invited by the Kaduna state government. This was while addressing workers at the state secretariat in Kaduna. Adamu Sunday reports. Members of various labor unions carrying placards with different inscriptions converge on NLC Kaduna state secretariat in continuation of their strike. The issue is simple. You sack 7,700, reinstate them. You are planning to sack 11,000. Don't do that. Simple. I'm calling the attention to the governor of Kaduna State to bring it into dialogue with the, with the Nigeria Labour Congress so that they will have the next line of action. Meanwhile, the law in socio-economic activities continues as a result of the NLC strike. Public power supply is shut down while schools, hospitals, Train services and Kaduna Airport remain closed in Kaduna, Adamusonde, NTA News. The Nigeria Governors Forum has appealed to the organized labor to exercise restraint in the ongoing labor protest against Kaduna government staff audit. A statement by its chairman and governor of Ekite State, Dr. Kari Fayemi, says the present economic reality occasioned by the 2020 COVID-19 impacts is now compelling states to adopt measures of cautioning the effects and called on labor leaders to remain calm. The chairman notes that at this critical time, negotiation should serve as the only instrument in resolving the current impasse and called for understanding on both sides to rebound economic activities for development and social well-being of the state and its people. This is the news at 7 on NCA at Bekutsi Channel 12. More news after this time out. Stay with us.
It a fun day, Sabi. You want to grow six parts in a day. I beg you not to pass me your power. You want to show yourself, oh. Whatever your size, find it with the new Etel data plans. Dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you. Airtel, the smartphone network. He stole my real fat But you already know this, Lara, darling. Yes, but I have to 25 years. She just told me who my real father is. Feast your eyes from as low as 50 Naira for one hour. Simply dial star triple seven hash. Welcome back. Nigerian Television Authority, NCA Oyo, has solicited for financial support from good spirited individuals and corporate bodies in order to fix the damaged portions of the station's roof that were blown off by torrential storm. The officer in charge of the station, Adikunle Adebayo, made the plea while assessing the extent of damage done by the rainstorm on Monday night. Correspondent Juliana Oladejo has the details. The on-spot assessment of the havoc revealed that the office of the officer in charge of the station was seriously damaged and properties such as roofing sheets, plants, and suspended seeds, what thousands of naira were affected. The officer in charge, Adekule Adebayo, though thank God for sparing the life of the staff, however solicited for support from all and sundry in order to fix the place as the office could not be left in vacuum for so long. I left not quite five minutes when the torrential uh, storm wrecked the havoc. It's unfortunate that it happened, but I have to give thanks to God. We we'll spare our life if we are in the office and it happened this way. What will we say now? My plea is for people to rally around me. NTO doesn't have anything to take care of what has happened. The storm also affected some other parts within and outside the station premises. From Oyo and Juliana Oladejo, NTO News. The federal government is stepping up advocacy to end open defecation in the country in line with global action for sustainable and healthier environment. Belikisu Omar Gurku reports that National Orientation Agency, NOR, is driving the campaign which kicks off in Lafia, the Nassau state capital. It will be recalled that in November 2019, the federal government signed into law the prohibition of open defecation for the well-being of the citizens. Against this backdrop, the NOA, in collaboration with the Ministry for Water Resources, has launched a campaign against open defecation, which is to be taken to all the nooks and crannies of the state. Right now, we are going into the rainy season, and any careless defecation will consume it back in our waters. So the people need to know. The people need to accept. It's not about how much money we have to construct toilets. We need to take precaution. Representative of the Minister of Water Resources in a paper tax clean Nigeria used the toilet said about 46 million people in Nigeria practice open defecation, which in turn posed a lot of health challenges to the people. We need all Nigerians, the entire populace of Nigerians, we need them to put all hands on deck to get open Nigeria free. 
uh, to get Nigeria open defecation free by 2020. Nasrallah State First Lady Slifat Abdullahi Sle, represented by the Commissioner for Women Affairs Halima Jabiru, called on members of the public to adhere to the call and avoid open defecation, which has negative effects, especially on women and children. Participants said the training is apt considering the dangers of open defecation on the people. Nigeria is expected to win the campaign against open defecation by the year 2025. In Lafia, Belkisu Umar Gurku, NTA News. And in the arena, we join Samuel Johnson on Sports Update. Nigeria's para badminton team to the just concluded para badminton championship in Spain returned to the country on Monday night after an impressive outing. The team, which had two players on the trip, saw Eniola Bolaji making history by winning a gold medal to become the first Nigerian and African to win a gold medal at a major international para badminton championship. With this feat, she also qualified for the World Para Championship coming up in October in Japan. I'm very happy for breaking the record. I'm very grateful. This girl put Nigeria and Africa on the map, on the world map of badminton. In judo, two top Nigerian judokas, Joy Asoye and Patrick Edwin, left the country on Tuesday for Dakar, Senegal, to take part at the African Senior Judo Championship. Both athletes who were gold medalists at the last National Sports Festival in Edo State, say they are well prepared to excel at the championship. My main mission is to go there and do my best so that I'll be ranked up. It help us gain a lot of experience. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Volleyball Association says it has discovered new talent that will be groomed for the state's men and women's team. This was achieved at the state's inter-club volleyball championship which ended at the Teslim Balogu Stadium. At the end of the three-day competition, Crown Prince defeated Legacy male team 3-0 to emerge champion in the men's category, while elite ladies also beat Legacy female team by the same margin to win the women's event. We had over uh, 10 different um, volleyball scouts that have been looking at the players. At least we are going to have an increase in number of our players that we're going to have a national team. In football, Chelsea will attempt to revenge its FA Cup final loss to Leicester City when the team clashed tonight in one of the midweek encounters of the English Premier League with sports update Samuel Johnson, NTA News. And that concludes Channel 12 News. I'm Ayala Balogo. Thanks for being there. Thank you.